Hey, 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 good morning. Pajama Grandma Sharon Hornelstrom here with Chronic Painkillers Prescriptions. Just some tips, tricks, and strategies I am sharing that I've learned over the last 37 years dealing with chronic illness and chronic pain that have helped me to kill chronic pain, kick it to the curb, kick it out of my life as much as humanly possible, and create the life that I love, live the life that I, I know and knew I always deserved to be living, not the one that the doctors and experts led me to believe I was stuck with and that it was all that I could expect. Uh, I was told that all I could expect was to be bedridden, writhing in pain and miserable for my, the rest of my life. And when you're 23, 24 years old and your doctors in several different fields tell you that, you have a tendency to believe them and that sends you into a downward spiral that can get very, very ugly. Unless, of course, when you hit the bottom of that, you bounce up because there's always springs underneath us and we can bounce back up. So today, I want to know if you know what your primary question is. We all operate on a primary question. I'm going to give you an example of what mine was right before my sudden cardiac arrest and that after I woke up and actually was lucky enough to recover from that, I realized what my primary question was and that I needed to immediately change it. So I was living a very, very stressful life <clears throat> at the time and I wasn't taking care of myself and a whole lot of stuff in a lot of areas of my life was all going on simultaneously to freak me out, stress me out. <clears throat> and, and at the, the lowest point or the highest point, however you look at it, I had a sudden cardiac arrest and dropped dead in, on the middle of the floor of my business. And fortunately for me, there were people there that could revive and resuscitate me because otherwise I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. <laughs> so that's been part of my chronic illness and chronic pain journey, actually dying. Um, and after that, when I woke up in the hospital from the coma, the first words out of my mouth were actually my primary question. And how I knew they were my primary question is because my family had actually been betting on what I would say first when I woke up. And of course, they were right because the words out of my mouth were, and cover your ears if you don't like swearing, was what the fuck? Because I didn't know where I was. I didn't know what was going on. And that phrase popped out of my mouth immediately. And <clears throat> I didn't realize it at the time, but within the next week or so, as I started to get more aware of what was going on and what had happened and started asking questions about it, I realized that, and I, I learned this from Tony Robbins probably decades earlier, that we all live our life based on a primary overriding question. And it was in my face that I had been living for at least a decade with WTF as my primary question, the question that rolled around in my mind and my subconscious thousands and thousands of times a day. And I was analyzing and filtering absolutely everything I thought, felt, believed, and did through that WTF filter. Now, as I started thinking about the WTF filter, it's not a very empowering filter. It's a really bad filter because it leaves me frustrated and stressed out because it presupposes that there's always something wrong. If I'm always asking WTF, it means that what's going on right now is in some way, shape, or form wrong and not as it should be. Yet, everything that goes on around us is always perfect. It's always exactly as it should be for what we need to see and know right now. So as I was on this journey and asking questions, it became pretty apparent that I needed to kill that question. WTF had to get out of my life and I had to replace it with something else. So I spent, you know, a couple of weeks thinking about, well, what do I want my primary question to be? What would empower me and what would give me better results because I'm asking a better question. And I finally replaced it with what am I creating now? And I try to ask myself, and it's not always perfect, but I try to ask myself in any situation, what am I creating now? When I'm thinking a thought that's disempowering or a limiting belief, what am I creating now? Damn, stop that. I'm creating that exact thing that I'm thinking about that I don't want right now. If I'm thinking about why do I always hurt? Why do my hips always hurt? Why, why is this always bothering me? Guess what? I get more hip pain, things always bothering me, and I always hurt. So... What am I creating now? I have gotten rid of WTF and instilled and installed in me 
and my subconscious, what am I creating now? What am I creating now with my negative self-talk? I know if you've been listening to me for a while, you know I still use negative self-talk. I, I go in streaks where I don't use any because I know better. And then there's other times I just slip into this old habits of negative self-talk limiting beliefs. Human, I guess, but it's something I know that I need to stop doing. And so I try to catch myself by using what am I creating now? If I am using negative self-talk or doubting myself in any way, shape, or form or area of my life, it's contributing to my chronic pain because it isn't living in alignment with who I am. So do you have a primary question? Do you know what your primary question is? Think about it for a couple of days. And if you don't know what it is, guess what? The people around you do. Um, I honestly didn't know that WTF was my primary question. I had no clue. I was doing it subconsciously all the time. But I didn't know that. I was not consciously aware of it. But everyone around me knew. So if you're brave enough, ask people around you, hey, what do you think my primary question is? And this is going to hurt a little, but if you are super suffering and really struggling with your chronic pain and it just feels like it's getting worse and worse, chances are your primary question has something to do with your pain and that you're actually asking a primary question that is intensifying and making it worse. I know that hurts. I know that's hard to believe. It's hard for me to believe that I could make myself dead by asking a bad primary question, but that is exactly what I did. So that's today's heavy prescription for today. Go out, make it an awesome day. Try to figure out what your primary question is. And you can always tell by the results you're getting in your life. If you're getting more pain, your primary question has something to do with more pain. If you're losing money, your primary question has something to do with loss, scarcity, um, missing out on losing money. Um, whatever our results are, are an indicator to what our primary question is. I was stressed out, freaked out, frustrated, running around like a chicken with my head cut off. And that's not what led me to discover my primary question. Actually dropping dead led me to my primary question because it was the first words out of my mouth when I woke up. And then my family corroborated it for me because I asked them. I was brave enough to ask them after that as part of my journey to discover my primary question. So go out, figure out that primary question because it's that important. And when you figure out what it is, Choose what you want your primary question to be and start asking yourself it as many times a day as you possibly can. What am I creating now? What am I creating now? What am I creating now? That's it. Make it an awesome day. I'm wishing you a pain-free, terrific day. Let's kill that chronic pain and help you to live the life that you deserve. I'll see you again soon with another chronic painkiller's prescription. Bye-bye.